The sudden unexpected death of a healthy individual undergoing minor surgery is a tragedy almost beyond comprehension in this day of modern medical miracles. Yet this still happens to patients susceptible to malignant hyperthermia. We are group 13 and will be presenting on malignant hyperthermia. As you can see, we have the following objectives. Define malignant hyperthermia. Identify patients who are at risk for developing malignant hyperthermia. Identify three signs and symptoms of malignant hyperthermia. And to describe immediate interventions in the event of malignant hyperthermia. Malignant hyperthermia is a genetic disease that causes a fast rise in body temperature and severe muscle contractions when the affected person undergoes general anesthesia. Triggering agents of malignant hyperthermia induce an abnormally high influx of calcium into skeletal muscles and include the following. The volatile gaseous inhalation anesthetics include desflurane, enflurane, halothane, isoflurane, methoxyflurane, and sevoflurane. Depolarizing muscle relaxants that cause malignant hyperthermia include succinylcholine. Biological stressors such as physical exercise and extreme heat may also cause malignant hyperthermia, but it is very rare. Some of those at risk for malignant hyperthermia include those with a susceptibility with autosomal dominant inheritance pattern and muscular young men. This means that children and siblings of a patient with MH susceptibility usually have a 50% chance of inheriting a gene defect for malignant hyperthermia and hence would also be susceptible to this disease. They therefore may develop a malignant hyperthermia reaction upon exposure to triggers. The incidence rate of malignant hyperthermia can be as high as 1 in 5,000 administrations of general anesthesia with triggering agents. The rate varies depending on concentration in a given geographic area. High incidence areas include Wisconsin, Nebraska, West Virginia, and Michigan. Symptoms of malignant hyperthermia are broken down into early manifestations and late manifestations. The early manifestations include tachycardia, tachypnea, hypercarbia, and muscle rigidity. The late manifestations include flushing, cyanosis, hyperthermia, respiratory and or metabolic acidosis, arrhythmias, and hyperkalemia. When a combination of malignant hyperthermia trigger agents are used, a more rapid onset of symptoms may occur. MH susceptible persons have a mutation that results in the presence of abnormal proteins in the muscle cells of their body. Although normal in everyday life, when these patients are exposed to certain anesthetic agents or in rare cases when exposed to high environmental heat or strenuous exercise, it causes an abnormal release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum in the muscle cell, which results in a sustained muscle contraction and thus an abnormal increase in metabolism and heat production. The muscle cells eventually are depleted of adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, which is the source of cellular energy. This causes the muscle cell to die, releasing large amounts of potassium into the bloodstream, causing hyperkalemia. This is followed by ventricular arrhythmias. The muscle pigment myoglobin is also released from the muscle cells and may be toxic to the kidney. If a patient thinks they may be susceptible to malignant hyperthermia, there are several screening tests that can be done. Genetic testing is very specific, for they are looking for specific DNA mutations. This blood test is lower in cost and less invasive than the contracture test, but only detects about 30% of at-risk persons. The caffeine halothane contracture test is much more invasive than the genetic testing. A muscle tissue biopsy is exposed to halothane and caffeine to determine MH susceptibility. This test is ex expensive and inconvenient for the patient, but gives m much more accurate results. The Malignant Hyperthermia Association of the United States recommends the following protocol for the prevention of malignant hyperthermia. 
Some preoperative questions that should be asked of any patient prior to undergoing an anesthetic procedure include personal history of reactions related to anesthesia, family history of malignant hyperthermia or complications related to anesthesia, personal history of dark or cola-colored urine following anesthesia, personal history of unexplained high fever following surgery, or personal history of a per muscle disorder or weakness. Several preoperative measures should be taken to prepare for an anesthetic procedure involving a malignant hyperthermia susceptible patient. These include the following. Removing vaporizers and replacing gas hoses on anesthesia machines. Using a new or disposable breathing circuit. Obtaining a preoperative creatinine kinase and CBC from the patient. Placing cooling blankets on the table for easy accessibility and prophylaxis treatment administered at 2.5 milligrams per kilogram given IV 30 minutes prior to administering anesthesia. All operating rooms should have these things readily available during a procedure. Your institution should have a written treatment plan visibly posted in the operating room. All operating rooms should have a malignant hyperthermia kit that includes dantrolene, bacteriostatic water for injection, bicarbonate, and ice saline. In addition to these measures, all operating and recovery room personnel should receive the proper training in order to be prepared for a malignant hyperthermia event. During an operation, the nurse should closely monitor the patient's blood pressure, temperature, pulse ox, respirations, and EKG rhythm. The most accurate way to monitor an at-risk patient is through an arterial line or CVP monitoring. When a patient is at risk for developing malignant hyperthermia, special care should be taken to avoid using known triggers. Listed on the slide are some examples of medications to avoid. Here you will see a list of anesthetics and muscle relaxants that are safe alternatives to use for patients who are at risk for developing malignant hyperthermia. Treatment for malignant hyperthermia requires immediate action. You should discontinue the use of inhaled anesthetics and succinylcholine. Dantrolene sodium, which is the gold standard for treating malignant hyperthermia, is a muscle relaxant that decreases contractions and the release of calcium from skeletal muscle, so it reverses the changes caused by malignant hyperthermia. It contains dantrolene sodium, mannitol, and sodium hydroxide. Dantrolene is a tissue irritant, so it should be administered through a freely flowing IV line to prevent thrombophlebitis. Avoid administering calcium channel blockers along with dantrolene as the combination may cause life-threatening hyperkalemia and myocardial depression. You should administer oxygen to meet the higher metabolic needs of the body and monitor labs including electrolytes, ABGs, blood sugar, and clotting times, specifically watching CK and potassium levels. A Foley catheter should be inserted in order to monitor myoglobin levels in the urine. You should administer IV fluids and diuretics in order to help maintain a urine output of 2 milliliters per kilogram per hour. This ensures cellular hydration and proper kidney function. For the fever, you should administer IV fluids, apply a hypothermia blanket to the patient's body, ice packs should be placed in the groin, neck, and axilla, and lavage can be performed in open cavities or gastric tubes in the bladder. Cooling should be stopped when the patient's core temperature reaches 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Sodium bicarbonate can also be administered for severe acidosis, which occurs during malignant hyperthermia due to hypermetabolism and the production of lactic acid. For patients who are susceptible to malignant hyperthermia but did not experience an event during anesthesia, they should receive post-operative care, including monitoring temperature and ECG for one to two hours. No additional dantrolene needs to be administered to these patients. There are several negative outcomes if malignant hyperthermia is not recognized and treated early. These include rhabdomyolysis, increased oxygen consumption by the body, cardiac arrest, kidney failure, problems with blood coagulation, internal hemorrhage, brain injury, liver failure, and death. In order to prevent these serious adverse effects, immediate, immediate intervention is vital. 
As nurses, it is our responsibility to identify signs and symptoms of malignant hyperthermia and be knowledgeable of protocols in order to decrease potential complications. These are the references used during this presentation.